I'm still in Joshua 22 today, and I'm reading verses 7 through 9. Now to half the tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given a possession in Bashan, but to the other half of it, Joshua gave a possession among their brethren on this side of the Jordan, westward. And indeed, when Joshua sent them away to their tents, he blessed them and spoke to them, saying, Return with much riches to your tents, with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, and with very much clothing. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. So the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel at Shiloh, which is at the land of Canaan, to go to the country of Gilead, to the land of their possession, which they had obtained according to the word of Yahweh by the hand of Moses. This passage is a, it's a little confusing, uh, trying to discern who exactly Joshua is talking to. And although it mentions the half-tribe of Manasseh that was on the west side of the Jordan, he's actually speaking to the half that was going to the east side. Uh, the comment about the uh, the part of the tribe of Manasseh that was inheriting on the west side was more parenthetical. Um, so the half tribe of Manasseh and Reuben and Gad had, with the rest of Israel, had conquered uh, all the territory on the east side of the Jordan River, and they had asked to be able to keep it because it was perfect land for their cattle. And they had a lot of cattle and they could use the good grazing land. And Moses and God agreed with them that this was a good thing for them to have as long as they helped their brothers capture all of the territory on the, east, on the west side, which they did. Uh, they kept their promise and so Joshua kept the promise that Moses had made to them. They were rewarded for their hard work, not just with land, but with gold and silver, uh, with uh, spoils of war, um, bronze, iron, and very much clothing. You know, at the time, uh, clothing, especially fine clothing, was very expensive. A person couldn't expect to have more than a couple of changes of clothing at a time. Not like us today who have closets and dressers full of clothes. Um, but they got all of this not through their own efforts, but by the power of God. They never could have defeated Bashan and Og and uh, Jericho and I under their own power. It was only through the power of God that they made these conquests and gained all of this wealth. So let me read to you from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. And you shall remember Yahweh your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. People are fond of pointing out the, uh, all of the warnings in Scripture about wealth. Uh, you know, don't, you can't serve both God and mammon. Um, uh, lay up treasures for yourself in heaven and not on earth where things rust and decay. And all that's true. Um, the Bible doesn't contain any promises of material wealth. It contains promises of blessings. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get rich uh, because you obey God or you, you, you give money to some charity or other. That's not scriptural. But it's also not scriptural to say that wealth and that money is evil. It's not. God frequently blesses his people with material wealth, and the Bible says so repeatedly. Don't let anyone tell you that wealth is never a blessing. It is. But you have to keep wealth in perspective. All of your blessings are given to you by God. Every penny that you get, you get because God allows it. Now, some people become rich by lying and cheating. Some people become poor by lying and cheating. But that's because God uses our circumstances, whether it's wealth or poverty, as a test to reveal the character that's already in our hearts uh, and to put us into the circumstances where we will show the world who we are in witness against ourselves. or so that we can use those circumstances for His glory to further the work of the kingdom. Whether God gives you wealth or God gives you poverty, use it for God's glory, not yours. It's important to keep those things in perspective. Um, you have to be careful not to allow money to become your master. Uh, it's not a sin to have wealth, and it's fine to ask God for more wealth to try to earn more than you have. There's nothing wrong with that. 
as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, as long as you're keeping God at the center and the needs of his kingdom first. And once God has blessed you with wealth, it's just fine to enjoy that wealth, to use it for your own benefit, as long as you're still using it for his benefit first. Um, and just as you shouldn't let anybody make you feel guilty for having and using the wealth that God has given you, don't let anybody tell you that you should be proud of being poor. There's no inherent virtue in either being rich or poor. Sometimes God wants you to be poor for his glory. Sometimes he wants you to be rich for his glory. And then you have to follow Paul's example uh, when he said that, in richness and in poverty, whatever circumstances come his way, God has enabled him to, uh, to accept whatever. Uh, God blesses you in whatever circumstances you are in if you are using those circumstances to bless him and to bless his kingdom and the people around you. This is Jay Carper from American Torah. Be blessed.